Welcome to another installment of Tech in 10. Today, my colleague Allison Hebron will be joined by Jamie Zage, leader of SG2's Neurosciences Service Line. They'll be talking about three exciting technologies in telestroke, intracranial laser ablation, and deep brain stimulation. Here's Allison with more. Jamie, thanks for being here. We're excited to have you. So we're going to talk about three really exciting technologies in the neurosciences today. So let's start with telestroke. We've been hearing about this for quite a while. So what's the current technology approach that you're seeing in the landscape? Sure. We're seeing everything across the gamut from still using the telephone mm -hmm. to very simple putting a video system and a computer on a cart um, and using that as a way to, to relay that video based information about the patient to the, the, the doc at the other end. Um, and then we're seeing you know turnkey solutions that include um, you know, videos on carts, you know, built-in systems, um, and, and all the software and online platform packages that go with it. And we're even seeing the robotic systems as well, where now you don't even need a staff member at the spoke site mm -hmm. to be able to move that, that device around. Um, and organizations are, are adopting all of these, depending upon uh, the needs of their network. Um, so that sounds great. A robot sounds expensive. Yeah. So if I'm looking to get into this, should I expect to spend a lot? Are there more cost-effective solutions? Definitely. And that is one of the considerations right. for how you make uh, d technology adoption decisions in this space is how much do you have to spend? And also, what is the arrangement going to be with your spoke hospitals in terms of are you going to provide the technology to them as a hub or you know, are they going to fund it themselves? Um, but you know, kind of at the very basic end, it can be you know, fairly low cost but when you get further up you move to more of a leasing arrangement so it's thousands of dollars per month month again depending upon how many spoke sites you're serving yeah. um, but uh, certainly that's not the biggest barrier to entry or, or biggest ticket item that we've seen in these, these the adoption of this um, we have the IT infrastructure yeah. the wireless networks, so that these devices can transmit that information over the internet to get back to that doc who's reviewing the information yeah. now most hubs have this in place already, so there's not a lot of extra expense there. A lot of community hospitals do as well, um, but where it is a barrier is in some of those critical access hospitals that just haven't been able to justify putting that technology in yet. Right, that makes sense. So what's next? Uh, if we look over the next couple years, if I'm in a telestroke network right now and looking to expand, or maybe I'm just thinking about getting my feet wet in telestroke, uh, right. what's next? Right. So what we're seeing is sort of that next evolution, especially as we're seeing more of these networks come up. And you know, now you've got hubs who are, ne are competing for spoke sites, right, so that they can get both that interaction as well as those referrals and build those relationships, is focusing in on the service angle of it. So what is your technology doing to be able to capture the information about the care that's being delivered for patients? And can it be used then to transmit to the quality reporting for CMS and get with the guidelines and the the other organizations that track quality um, and then kind of even going beyond that what's the network do to support continued quality improvement across all of the sites um, some organizations are using you know quarterly conference calls across all of the network members as a way to connect them uh, share best practices triage you know issues right. that might be coming up and we're seeing this as a, a big sticky factor for these networks great very exciting I know we'll continue to watch it over the next coming years as well so our second technology, laser ablation. So tell me about this. What is it? What procedures is it used for? Right. So this is a surgical approach, a minimally invasive surgical mm -hmm. approach to get into deep brain tissue. Um, it uses uh, heat at the end of a probe as opposed to kind of going in and cutting out that tissue. For neurosurgery, we see applications in brain cancer, including brain mets, mm -hmm. um, as well as in epilepsy, being able to remove those epilepsy foci. So what's the, um, what's the business case? If I'm a hospital executive looking to maybe invest in this technology, what considerations do I need to have or what's the business case? For right, me? right. Well, there's a couple of different angles here. So first, it's a, it's a, because it is a less invasive procedure, you're using a much smaller um, kind of opening in the skull. So you're doing a burr hole instead of a craniotomy. So it's a much shorter procedure time. Um, you're talking one to two hours instead of four to five hours. So now you 
you can do more procedures in your OR. So there's, there's one component. Um, and then you're looking at faster recovery times for patients. Most patients who are getting these kinds of procedures are going home, like the next day. So um, especially on the brain cancer side. So now you're looking at lower length of stay, which actually ap <laughs> will have a cost impact or you know, reducing cost impact for your organization as well. And then we see uh, the other component is that you can uh, potentially treat more patients. Right. There are some of the brain met patients you might have not been able to treat using an open surgical approach. Mm -hmm. And then there are applications outside of neurosurgery as well. Uh, prostate, liver, kidney um, are where we're seeing the device be used today, but there's certainly, I expect to see expanding applications in soft tissues moving forward. That's great. So if I have an underutilized MR suite, this might be a good idea for me to invest in, perhaps expand the procedures right, being done in right. the Right, right, and, and that's a key point. You do need to have an M interoperative MRI uh, for this, this technology, and so there are right now only 30 organizations across the country who have this, um, you know, we're talking about those upper end tertiary level right. neurosciences centers right now um, who are being able to provide this. But um, this is this is going to be a, a key uh, technology moving forward. We do expect the, the technology adoption to expand um, and, and broaden, I think, uh, over the next five to seven years. Great. Very exciting. So our last technology of the day, a sleep deep brain stimulation. So tell me more. So. You've been in the, the neurosurgery OR suite. You know, patients who get DBS procedures typically are on the table for four to six hours and they're awake for the majority of that time. And the reason they're awake is that in order to make sure you're getting that stimulating, uh, you know, lead to the right place to actually be able to reduce those tremors, to impact those tremors, um, you need the patient awake so that when you get it there, you can test um, and make sure that those tremors do stop when you turn the device on. Now, for um, a sleep DBS, mm -hmm. now you can use image guidance, um, image guided OR, interoperative OR MRI systems, um, can allow you to see where that probe is going or where that, that, that lead is going. Um, and so now patients can be asleep during the procedure and don't have to be awake. What a great patient satisfier. That's exciting. So what's the cost for the technology? Sure, so uh, interoperative MRI approach, which I'll talk about first, um, is an, a software add-on by ClearPoint. Um, it's a, called the ClearPoint Neuro Intervention System. It costs $130,000. Um, and then you've got another 7,500 7, in disposable cost per procedure. Um, but the key component here is the interoperative MRI, You know, $4 million for that component. Right. Um, so that can potentially be a barrier to entry. Now. There is another alternative. Um, there are some systems across the country, uh, some health systems who are, are getting into this, who are looking at a CT-based approach where you're doing a CT scan prior to the surgery and then using uh, image guidance systems, using fiducials, um, Medtronic Stealth is one, and again, using that software component to be able to navigate to the right location while that patient's asleep. Great, so what are we, over the next three to five years, what do we expect to see? What's the impact of this technology? Yeah. So there's a, there's a couple of interesting impacts here. Uh, the first is that we are definitely gonna see this as a patient satisfier. Um, and we've seen this in a couple of markets already where there's a few organizations who have started to adopt and they're seeing, uh, the competitors in those markets are seeing their patients and their referral streams start to dry up um, and seeing that market share shift already. So that's the kind of an immediate impact. Mm -hmm. um, over the long run too, I think we're gonna see patient um, uh, application, or not the patient, the patient pool expand. So those who are appropriate for the procedure um, because there are a number of Parkinson's patients, movement disorder patients today who can't withstand that four to six hour procedure awake, um, but they can uh, go through an asleep procedure. Great, well that's very exciting. Thank you so much for joining us. It's You're great welcome. to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie and Allison. So in summary, we heard about three new technologies. In Telestroke, we heard about the range of technology options that are available for both hubs and spokes in Telestroke networks. As you consider the right technology option for your organization, evaluate the impact of the technology on the level of service that's delivered, as well as the quality of care. Both of these are gonna be very important as competition between Telestroke networks intensifies. We also heard about two new technology options, especially appropriate for tertiary and quaternary neurosciences programs. Options that can increase the number of patients that may qualify for advanced interventions. First, intracranial laser ablation, an emerging minimally invasive surgical option for neurosurgery patients that also has the potential to significantly reduce procedure time as well as length of stay and recovery. 
Finally, we heard about new deep brain stimulation options that facilitate these procedures while patients are asleep. This has the potential to significantly increase patient satisfaction, and we've heard of it moving market share in specific locations. Thank you very much for watching, and please join us for another installment of Tech in 10.